Hey, I'm Andrew Skirk with Sierra Designs. Over the next couple of minutes, I'm gonna show you how to find five-star campsites like this one. There are a lot of qualities that drew me to this particular site that I'll get to, but we're gonna start by going on a quick tour of this surrounding area, and I'm gonna show you a number of campsites that I passed up. I personally put a lot of thought into exactly where I camp. Even with really good equipment, it's difficult to sleep well if I'm in an area that's cold, wet, windy, and buggy. But before we go on that tour, two quick things. First, we're doing these videos on Boulder Open Space and Mountain Parks where camping is prohibited, so I just ask that you please play along with us. The second is that it's not always appropriate to use a low-use or no-use campsite like this one. We're permitted, I love these campsites, I sleep really well in these areas because it's a higher quality camp. But there are a number of circumstances where I don't use this particular type of campsite. So specifically, if I'm in an area where there are designated campsites, I always stay in those designated spots. And then the other circumstances when I'm traveling in a group or if I'm planning to stay in one area for an extended period of time, it's best to use an established campsite so that way my impact is minimized and concentrated and that camping style is much more consistent with leave no trace principles. One of the most useful things that I use is a data sheet and I can use these if my route is dialed in and known ahead of time. So suppose that on the first night of this trip I was camped here at mile 12 at the trail junction north of Pinto Lake. And the night before, I would have said, all right, well, how far do I want to go tomorrow? And let's say I want to go 20 miles tomorrow. That put me right around mile 31.7, say, or some place between 32.7. So kind of somewhere in this area. And so I, I kind of know that this is about where I'd like to make it, but let's suppose I go a little bit short or I go a little bit further. So I kind of have this range of potential campsites for the following night. I look at my maps. And I dial, I kind of zone, zone, uh, hone in on this particular location where I think I'd like to camp. And kind of here's this trail junction. And I look around and say, all right, where, where in this vicinity could I potentially camp? And if I were short, so if I were say, say I didn't quite make it that far, where along here could I camp? Or if I hiked more miles than I thought, where say along here might I be able to camp? And on the map, I'm looking for areas that are forested and flat and close to, but not sort of right up on water and um, uh, also some uh, areas where I think maybe there's some aesthetic value. I can see why someone would be interested in this campsite right here. You have this phenomenal backdrop, but frankly, this is a terrible campsite. There are two big problems with it. The first is that there are no wind breaks. So if the wind picks up tonight, I'm gonna get knocked around. The other issue and the more important one is that on a cloudless night, this area is gonna lose a tremendous amount of heat through radiation. And without any thermal cover, specifically trees, to bounce that heat back at me, this area, this meadow here is gonna get really cold. This was another candidate. I liked this campsite because of all these ponderosa pines next to me and above me. This area is also a little bit more tucked in, so it has better wind protection. The ground here is also excellent. It's flat, it's soft, it's porous, so this ground is gonna insulate me well, and if it were rain tonight, the water is gonna percolate down into the ground rather than pooling on the surface. There's one major problem with this campsite though. Off to my right, I'm camped right next to a creek. This is a problem on a number of levels. First, it's usually a violation of backcountry regulations. Second, insects like mosquitoes and black flies, they usually hatch in water. So this area is probably gonna be buggier than an area a little bit further away. And then the final problem is that on a calm night, all the cold air is gonna sink into this draw because cold air is denser than warm air. So this campsite here is gonna be colder than a campsite even just 50 vertical feet higher. And then because it's colder, it's also gonna be more humid and condensation is more likely to form, which, and the condensation then could coat the inside of my shelter and also on the outside of my shelter as dew. So let's keep on looking. One final camp. This one is really convenient because it's right off the trail. The problem with convenient campsites is that they tend to be heavily used. And heavily used campsites have a number of problems. One is that they tend to have really hard compacted sleeping surfaces like this one here. So a lot of people have, have camped here, have walked around here, so a hard surface is gonna be uncomfortable. It's also gonna be uh, very um, thermally conductive and it's gonna be cold and wet. Another issue with hard packed ground is you end up with standing groundwater like here. So after a recent rain, the water does, isn't, isn't able to percolate down into the soil. One final problem with high use campsites is that typically they have this fearless community of bears and mini bears. So raccoons, squirrels, mice, porcupines, and all of these rodents and larger mammals know that they can come here and find crumbs of food and sometimes buried food or entire bags of Snickers bars.
We're now back at our original campsite, and I'm gonna explain why I chose this one. It has a lot of the great qualities that we found in other campsites, but without a lot of the pitfalls. We start off with the great view of Bear Peak and South Boulder Peak there in the background. And as we walk deeper into this camp, you can see some other really great qualities. It has this wind block on the west side, which is usually where the wind comes out of. I have Ponderosa Pines, which gives me really good thermal cover, so I'm not gonna suffer from radiant heat loss right here. The forest floor is soft, it's flat, it's porous. I'm further away from the creek, so uh, humidity and cold aren't gonna be such a problem. And then the last one is that this is a basically a no-use campsite, and I'm, not, I'm much less likely to have a problem with bears and mini bears in this particular area. I'm very, very confident that I could get a great night's sleep here.